My favorite chocolate chip cookies have nine ingredients that, well, I can never remember. And my favorite story has seven ingredients that I really need to remember because they are such good news for me. Can you remember what they are? It's God, sin, Jesus' perfect life, death, and new life, Holy Spirit, and Jesus' return. They flow together like this. The gospel is the good news story of God rescuing a sinful world by sending his son Jesus to live the perfect life no one could live, die a punishing death sinners deserve, and miraculously defeat death by coming back to life. Jesus returned to heaven but sent the Holy Spirit to help everyone that would follow him, and he promised to return again to finally make everything new and wonderful forever. In the last session, we talked about the resurrection, the fact that Jesus was literally dead and then literally came back to life. It makes me think of one of the first things we learned in this study, that Yahweh has no limits. Should it surprise us then that not even death is a limitation for God? And here's another cool thing. The good news doesn't stop with Jesus' resurrection. The next part of the gospel story is so special and shows how very loved and safe we are. This part of the gospel is the Holy Spirit. Okay, here's what happened. After spending time with his disciples for about 40 days after his resurrection, Jesus ascended to heaven. Ascended is a fancy word that means went up, as in Caroline ascended the stairs. And someday I'll tell you about the story about how on this day when lots of new friends were at my house who I was trying to impress, I descended the stairs, but my shoe got caught, and then I kind of thumped all the way down and landed at the bottom with a big flourish, and then no one laughed. No one laughed. They just stared at me for what felt like 75 minutes. So Jesus' ascension was like the opposite of that. Before Jesus went back to heaven, he promised his disciples that he would not leave them alone. In fact, he told them that he would send a helper. My falling down the stairs thing is a great reminder that we can all use a helper, right? This helper was so very helpful that Jesus actually said in John 16, 7, that it was better for Jesus to leave so that the helper could come. The helper is the Holy Spirit. Now, the first thing you need to know about the Holy Spirit is that the Holy Spirit is God, just like Jesus is God, just like the Father is God. God is one God, and yet God himself has three distinct persons, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. They are all God, but they are not each other. Does that make sense? I didn't think so. This is one of those big God ideas that stretches our minds beyond their capacity, that nearly turns our human brains into pretzels if we think about it hard enough. This concept is called the Trinity. And one of the reasons I like remembering the Trinity is because it's a humbling reminder that God is so much bigger and more wonderful than we can ever imagine. What's neat about the Trinity is that it means God has perfect community within himself. He's never alone. Perfect love is always at work within God the Father, God the Son, and God the Spirit. So God's whole deal is this delightful, fulfilling togetherness. And in the story of the gospel, we see God the Father offering this wonderful togetherness to his people by sending God the Son and then sending God the Spirit. Are you tracking with me? Are your eyes crossed yet? Look, we don't have to fully understand this deep theological truth to be excited by it and to experience its good news in our lives. So let me tell you why this truth is good news for you in your regular old life. It starts here. After Jesus ascended, the Holy Spirit came to live within Jesus' disciples. And that meant God was with them wherever they went because he was within them. The Holy Spirit arrived one day with a whoosh and immediately went to work, speaking through Jesus' disciples. What was crazy was that at that time, people had gathered there from all these different countries. And because of the Holy Spirit, each person could hear in his own language all the disciples were saying about the spectacular things God had done. This is one of the jobs of the Holy Spirit, to empower God's people to talk about God, to empower others to hear about what God has done. The Holy Spirit is still doing this work today. The Holy Spirit has lots of jobs, and I like to list them with seven C's. Convicts, combats, comforts, counsels, connects, communicates, and crafts. Let's look at them one at a time. First, 
the Holy Spirit convicts God's people of their sin, reminding them it's a big deal so that they can repent and change. Two, the Holy Spirit helps God's people combat their sin so they can have victory over it. Three, he comforts God's people with God's presence, reminding them that they are not alone, reminding them that they are forever in his family, reminding them that they are no longer slaves to sin, but children of God. Four, he counsels God's people to understand and follow God's word, showing them how to follow God even in the most confusing places. Five, he connects God's people with one another, creating a family that lasts forever. Six, he communicates God's works through God's people so that others may follow him too. And finally, number seven, he crafts God's people from the inside so that they can match the new creation they are in Christ. Do you see why this part of the story is such good news? When we trust God and begin to follow him, God doesn't say, okay, great, you're my kid now. Figure your life out and I'll see you in heaven. No, he's like, I will be with you and within you so that I can help you and teach you to become more like me so that you can grow up to look more like your father. This is huge. And this is not just something that happened to Jesus' disciples a long time ago. This is something that happens to every single Jesus follower. The Holy Spirit comes to live within us the moment we begin to follow Jesus. It doesn't always come like a whoosh, but it's still just as real. If you are a Jesus follower, the Holy Spirit is within you, helping you in every way. He helps you by convicting you of your sins so that you can repent and be changed rather than be devoured by that dangerous predator. He helps you combat your sin so that you can have victory over it. He helps you by comforting you with God's presence so you can know that you're never alone, so that you can know that you are God's daughter forever. He helps you by counseling you to understand God's word and to follow him. He helps you by connecting you with other God followers granting you a spiritual DNA that you will share forever. He helps you by communicating God's works through you to others and communicating God's works through them to you. He helps you by crafting your insides to match the new creation that you already are in Christ. You know, it was clear that I had my earthly father's hair and eyes and last name from the time I was a baby. But as my dad parented me and was near me, I also began to develop some of his internal characteristics, like his love for Dr. Pepper, his discernment, and his tendency to crack a joke. Following God is something like that. We are his daughters and have his name right from the moment we are spiritually born into his family. But as he parents us and is near us, we begin to look more like him on the inside. Because of the Holy Spirit, Christ's followers look more like their dad as they grow. So let's talk about growing for a minute. You know, apple trees grow apples, banana trees grow bananas, and if there were cupcake trees, which would be great, I assume they would grow cupcakes. So a person filled with God's spirit will grow spirit fruit, fruit of the spirit. This kind of fruit is the most delicious fruit, something that the world around us craves. This fruit offers really good news for the world, but people aren't really like trees. We are new creations in Christ, but we don't automatically grow spirit fruit. We have to be receptive soil, dirt that lets the spirit do his job rather than trying to do it ourselves. The spirit gets to be the boss, and as the soil, we respond to what God wants rather than what our little soil hearts want. The Bible calls this walking by the spirit. The Holy Spirit is always walking with us, but we have to intentionally walk with him to grow as he desires us to. In Galatians 5, Paul writes the church of Galatia and he talks about spirit fruit, the kind of fruit that grows in our lives when we walk by the spirit. Here's how Paul describes this fruit in verses 22 and 23. But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. The law is not against such things. This means the Holy Spirit in you has the power to produce in you delicious fruit the world is so hungry for. Who isn't craving love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control? 
When those things are absent, the world experiences so much pain. When those things are present, it's wonderful. This kind of fruit grows slow, but when you spot it growing, it's really exciting. I noticed it once on my wedding anniversary. My husband and I have been married for 15 years, and it seems like we're always having to do things for other people on our anniversary. He's a pastor, and so for pastors, summers tend to get gobbled up with mission trips and camps and performing weddings. Historically, I've been a touch, you know, grouchy about this. Even though I follow Jesus, and even though I know I ought to be more loving and joyful and peaceful and patient, blah, 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 I've just been kind of annoyed and bitter on our anniversary. But all along, as the Holy Spirit has walked with me, and I tried to walk with him too, things began to grow. On our 12th anniversary, I didn't see my husband all day because he was doing someone's wedding, but then I realized, uh, I am actually at peace. I'm filled with joy. I'm so glad to be married to this man, and I'm glad to accept this day as it is. It was like looking at a height chart at the doctor's office and realize, I'm growing. Growing spirit fruit can be a really slow process. You cannot microwave this fruit, but it is truly a miracle to look back and see I'm growing on the inside. I look more like my father. Now, does that mean I will never be impatient and unloving and unkind on our anniversary ever again? <laughs> I don't know. The Holy Spirit is walking with me and is within me, but I need to keep walking with him too. As Paul says in verse 24, now those who belong to Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the spirit, let us also keep in step with the spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. Here, Paul is reminding me to keep killing off the sinful things I want and instead to walk by the Spirit. He's challenging us to keep going, to keep walking by the Spirit. And then he cautions us against getting conceited and braggy about the fruit we produce. I didn't make myself kind on that anniversary. I couldn't have done it. I don't know how to make true kindness. I only know how to make fake niceness. That kindness that day was God's miracle in me. All I did was surrender to him. Sisters, God has not left you alone to raise yourself, to grow yourself. Instead, he sent the Holy Spirit to be with you and within you. When you walk with him, when you surrender your wants and go with what God wants, spirit fruit will grow you will begin to look more and more like your father. You cannot make yourself more joyful or peaceful or kind or loving or any of that, but the Holy Spirit in you, well, he is a very good grower. Your job is just to be receptive soil. And speaking of growing, when I started writing this lesson, I only had three C's for the Holy Spirit. But as I wrote, the list kept growing as I reflected on all the Holy Spirit does. If you can believe it, the Holy Spirit does even more than the seven C's. But rather than me going on and on and on and giving you a list of four billion things and trying to make them all start with the letter C, how about you walk with him and see for yourself? I promise the Holy Spirit is really good news for you. <laughs>